Welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easier to understand. Today's problem, we're going to be talking about transverse and radial forces. So we have this problem here, and we have this collar B, and collar B can move about rod OA, so it can go back and forth like that, but also rod OA can move along O, right, about O. So it can go like that, and it can go like that, so it can be in any position over here. And because it has this sort of circular motion to it, we know polar coordinates are easier to use as opposed to Cartesian ones. Okay, if you are confused about what I'm saying, go back to the previous video in which we go uh, over the concepts of the polar coordinates and we also derive the velocity and the acceleration. So on this problem here we have a rod OA oscillating about O in a horizontal plane. The motion, uh, sorry, the motion of the 2.5 collar B is defined by relations of R and theta. So what are these R and theta? Well, R is that magnitude, right, given in millimeters, okay, given in millimeters, that is responsible for the vector R, which leads from the origin going all the way to where B is. And theta is similar, it's the magnitude of the angle for also for B given in radians. Okay, so in other words, if B is where it is right now, then my, oops, that was horrible, my vector R leads from O and goes, goes to B right there. Okay, and there's two components to that. So my vector R can be defined as R, the magnitude value, which is the one given by the equation, times R hat. Okay, R hat, if you recall, is a unitary vector, that is a vector of unit one, that is goes to the same direction as vector r, and our theta hat is a unitary vector that is perpendicular to r. Okay, so at any given point, we can tell the position of b, color b, by using vector r, which is defined by the magnitude r, and the unitary r, or r hat. Okay, so if b is where it is, that's going to be our um, relationship there. If, for instance, b is down here, then everything is the same, except that our magnitude r is a bit smaller, right? If, another example, if my b, oops, sorry, if my b is over here, for instance, then the same rule applies. I'll still have my vector r here, but then my r hat is over here, my theta hat is over here, and what changed is this angle of theta here. Okay, so note that this guy here, r hat, is a function of theta. Let me reverse everything I did. We can have original drawing again. All right, so what do we need to do? Let's go back and continue reading the question. Um, determine the radial and transverse components of force exerted on the collar when time equals one second and six seconds. Okay, so what is the idea? Because this guy is moving around, okay, because we know it's gonna be changing directions, and moving around, and we know that's gonna happen because of these equations given here for the magnitude r and for the angle theta, then we know there's a force being exerted at color b, right? That's Newton's second law. Newton's first law and second law in this, in this case here. So we're gonna have a radial force, radial force here, which is F, I'll put T here, subscript T, and a, oops, not T, R, and a transverse force, which is F, subscript T. To calculate these forces, it's quite simple because we know Newton's second law says that force is mass time acceleration. The mass we know from the start is 2.5 kilograms. That's the mass of color B. But what we need to know is the acceleration, both the radial acceleration and the transverse one. And to do that, we're going to need some more information. Do you, if you remember what we talked about on the last problem, when we defined this, is that the radial acceleration is defined as the second derivative of R in respect to T minus R and the first derivative of theta in respect to time squared. And the transverse one is r times the second derivative of theta in respect to time plus two times the derivative of r in respect to time and the derivative of theta in respect to time. It's multiplied. All right, so this comes from the previous video. Go check it out if you don't remember. But what we need to know is to be able to solve this problem, we're going to need these components, right? For the radial force, we're going to need this component here. For the transverse force, we're going to need this component here. All right? And to find these components, we're going to need the second derivative of r. Remember that r is the magnitude component on the direction of the vector. We're going to need r itself, which we have from the start. It's been given. And we're going to need the derivative of how theta is varying of time. We're also going to need the second derivative of how theta is varying of time, the derivative of how r is varying of time, and the derivative of theta which is the same one as here, all right? So in other words, we have equations for R. Let's just write them down. Equation for R, R is 250 T plus four, and this is in mils, so millimeters, and theta is two over pi sine of pi T. Okay, so what we need now is we need to derive these guys. So we need the, the, the first and second derivative of r, and we need the first and second derivative of this guy here. So we're going to define, uh, sorry, we're going to derive these equations so we can substitute for time equals one, time equals six, and then find the forces on those two situations. Okay, so it's a lot of, um, and this is in radians, a lot of algebra involved. Nothing hard, but you know, 
still have to do it. So let me just go ahead and first derive this, uh, divide this by a thousand, so that we have the answer now in meters, okay, nice meters. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to derive r in respect to time. So how is my, okay, I'm, I'm asking here, I'm finding a general equation for how is my magnitude, okay, this guy here, how is the magnitude of my r vector changing with time? Okay, that's what I'm trying to answer. That's the velocity, right? It's a type of velocity. And then the way we do that, if you recall, the only function that bears of time is the function on the bottom there. So what we can do is we can substitute, right? Let's do that, mm, I guess, probably on the side here. So what I can do is I want to find the derivative of this, and I have something, something, and then a function of time. Okay, so this is a constant, we don't have to worry about it. So what we can do is we can substitute where I have t plus 4, I'll have u, and I just need to make sure that this substitution it's not going to require any other adjustments, and it doesn't, right? So because du equals dt. So I can rewrite this whole revision as dr dt. Let me just make this a bit thinner. dr dt is the same thing as doing, I can substitute that by d, where I have dt here, where I have du, and it's going to be 1 over u, right? Because I just substituted where I have t plus 4 for u. And this derivative is quite simple. We can do it, and then this is going to be equal to negative 1, right? And then we can substitute back. So therefore, dr dt equals negative 1 over t plus 4 squared. So let's write that down. What was the, it's not 1, it's 0.25, so negative 0.25 divided by t plus 4 squared. And I'll do that one more time so we can have the acceleration component, and that's going to be the same idea, right? So we're getting negative, and we're going to be cubed, so negative, negative is positive, 0.25, and this is divided by 2 plus 4 cubed. Okay, so that, that's that for the R components. Now we need to tackle these guys here, the theta components. We'll grab this. Oh, and by the way, this is meters per second, right? Because we're deriving respect to time, and this is meters per second square. This is we're deriving per time twice. So let me go ahead and paste. Okay, so now we want to derive this guy here. So if we derive theta in respect to time, 2 pi is just a constant, it's going to stay there. The derivative of this guy, we're going to have to derive sine, that's going to be cosine, right? And we also need to derive the function inside, chain rule. So that's going to be the cosine of pi t, and then the derivative of pi t in respect to time is just equal to pi, right? So we need to multiply this by pi. Pi, pi, go away. So this equals just two times the cosine of pi times t. And I'll derive one more time. What's going to happen now, two stays a constant, and then derivative of, of cosine is going to be negative sine. And again, the derivative of this function is just going to be pi. So I'm going to have negative sine of pi t times pi, which is just minus two pi sine of pi t. Okay, so now, remember what we're looking for? We're looking for the forces. Looking for the force. Oops, the force. And to find the force, I need the mass, which I have, and I need acceleration. So if I want to find the uh, accelerations, I'm going to need a lot of information. All right, so let's go ahead and create a little table. I'm going to create a little table in which we're going to do part A, t equals 1. And I'm going to find r, derivative, first derivative of r, second derivative of r, and I'll also do for theta, the first derivative of theta, and the second derivative of theta. Okay, so r, if you guys recall, where's r? It's 0.25 t plus 4, right? If my t is 1, it's going to be 0.25 divided by 5. So there's a 0.25 divided by 5, and that's just 0 0.05 meters. The first derivative is minus 0.25, divided by 4 uh, plus t squared. So that's going to be 5 squared, so that's going to be just negative 0.01 meters per second. And the last one is positive 0.25, and then t plus 4 cubed. So this is be 5 cubed, so that's going to be 0 0.004 meters per second squared. Easy. Now over here, theta, that was... Um, 2 over pi sine of pi t. So t is 1, so that's going to be 1. So sine of sine of uh, pi is 0, so this is all 0. 
on the second one here we had 2 times the cosine of pi t and cosine of pi is um, minus 1 so it's going to be minus 2 minus 2 radians per second and then here we had minus 2 pi sine of pi t again sine of pi is 0 so this is 0 radians per second squared okay so we have all the information that we need for t equals 1 second and now we can calculate where is it these guys here let me go ahead and copy these So AR probably zoom out. So it'll be 0 0.004 minus R, which is 0 0.05 times the square of zero. Is that right? Uh, no, the first derivative. Sorry, where's the derivative? This is the first derivative. It's not zero. It's minus two squared. Okay, so this is 0.044 div minus 0.2, so negative 0 0.196. That's a unit meters per second squared. And down here, we have r, r being 0 0.05 again, 0 0.05. The second derivative of theta, that is 0, plus 2 times the first derivative of r, minus 0 0.01. And the derivative of theta, which is minus 2. So this gives me 4 times 0 point, so positive 0 0.04 meters per second squared. Brilliant. And now we want to be forced. Remember, that's the whole deal around this. We want to force this. So we just need to use Newton's second law. So um, radio force. Mass times radio acceleration. So it's 2.5 kilograms times minus 0 0.196 meters per second squared. It's going to give us a Newton, and that is 0.49 Newtons. Negative 0.49 Newtons. And for the transverse, F T for transverse, or F of theta, that'll be, again, mass times acceleration. So 2.5 kilograms times 0.04, which gives us 0.1 units. And so the radial one is much greater than the transverse one. Okay, so this is for part A, in which we have um, one at one second, right? So if after one second has elapsed, this is the situation. We have a force of 0.49 and 0.1. So let's go back to our problem. So at, at t equals one second, we're going to have a force of 0.1. 49 on this direction and of 0.1 units on this direction. All right? At time equals, I should probably get rid of those. At time equals 6, then I'm going to have to do the same thing before t equals 6. Okay? We don't have to do it here by 1. But we, what we can do is we can set up a table just like this. Instead of substituting by 1, we're going to be substituting by 6. That's all. So I'm happy to write that down quickly and speed up the video. All right, so what we find is that at six seconds, then we have both of them being negative, right? So the radial force being negative 0.249 newtons and the transverse one being 0.025 newtons. They're both negative. So we can imagine, I haven't really worked out the, let's see, 0.5 and then theta equals zero. So at t equals sec six seconds, our color somewhere around here because our theta is zero. So the rod is somewhere around here. Horrible drawer, I know that. Okay, so our Call it somewhere around there, and then we have a force that is pushing on this direction here. Radial direction with 0 0.249 newtons, and at the same time we have one that's pushing out on this way with 0 0.025 newtons. All right, if you have questions, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, 
in case this has helped you out and not to miss the next videos that are coming out soon.